Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Huda. I'm your host, Jumil Rashid, and I'm happy to welcome back today Sheikh Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Ask Huda. Let me just remind you quickly of our telephone numbers. The country code is 202, it should be popping up on your screen. Then it's 3855528 or 249. The conditions between a bride or somebody who's going to get married to people. She just wants to know what's the conditions in regarding the meetings. Uh, how many times can you meet? Can you uncover your face? How many times? Uh, how long can you speak for? How long can you sit with this person? Just the conditions uh, for meeting a person and how long this can take as well, Sheikh. First of all, Islam does not only allow the groom or the person who's interested in uh, a girl as his life mate mm -hmm. uh, to look at her. Now also, and Nabi Wasallam ordered somebody who uh, got engaged, said, have you seen her? He said, no. He said, no. Although, it is very important to look at her in order to really decide whether you like to have her as your wife or not. As she too has the right of looking at you, and examining you, and uh, talking to you and asking you questions mm -hmm. to figure out if you're going to be a good mate or not. So basically that could be done once, twice, and several times until you're satisfied uh, in a very legal way, which is you only see the hands and the face. The face expresses the beauty of the entire body and the beauty of the individual. And it gives you a clear idea of the complexion of the skin of the person. So this is all what you need. Whether you do that at home or you do it whenever she has any opportunity of going out or visiting uh, family members or friends or at school, whatever. But once you decided and you went to her father or her guardian and he asked for her hand, you proposed to him and you were accepted, now you are engaged. Many people misunderstand the nature of this relationship. Engagement is nothing more than a promise. It's it nothing doesn't like the give West, you the West any right. The, the one in the West where you're engaged. No, we don't even want to talk about the one in the West. <laughs> Engagement means wedding. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, I know a couple, one of them is a Muslim, that uh, he's been living in with the woman for a year, then they decided to get engaged. And then after that they decided to get married. That doesn't make sense. Islam is very pure and modest mm -hmm. religion. And it calls for chastity for the benefit of everyone, for the entire society, for the family, for the groom and for the bride. Imagine how comfortable you feel when you know that no one before you have touched her hand. And she's not been out, let alone being in bed with somebody. Because she is a modest girl. She's a chaste girl. So, once you're engaged, engagement means uh, this is some sort of a promise that one day we'll get married. I always advise the viewers and those who ask me and family members, friends and students that the engagement period has no really limit or a set time, but it shouldn't be long. It should be very fast and quick not to be bore, boring, and not to give an opportunity to the couple to have a conversation which could swing them uh, or swing with them into an area which is prohibited. So that's why as long as you're engaged, it does not allow you to do anything that was not allowed before, such as going out with her or touching her hand shaking hands with her, or hugging her, or kissing her, or seeing other than the face. Coming to see in the face. If the girl is wearing niqab, and she got engaged, and the groom made up his mind, and she made up her mind, and they settled for that, and there's a promise of getting married, then you should keep your niqab on, 
because he has already decided engagement is just mere promise of getting married. Okay, we're running out of time, but I just want to clarify one or two things quickly for the sister. So, if she wants to have one or two meetings with the, with this prospective yeah, spouse, one, two, two, and three, and five, as long as and they're engaged in the presence of ah, her male mahram. Okay, so never the, alone, or never like a mother or a sister. It's got to be a male mahram. Then? Okay, it is best to have a male mahram, mm -hmm. but if this stranger, he's still a stranger, comes at home, and there is only a couple of ladies, who is he? He's yes. just a fiancé. He's no one. Because she can say, um, I cancel this deal. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested anymore. In, in the case of engagement, she may avoid it or he may avoid it. And there's no commitment whatsoever on both parties. So we have to have a male mahram, somebody who's an adult. The purpose of having the male mahram is to prevent any sort of temptation. Imagine you are, remember when you got engaged, and you visited your in-law's house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as long as your father-in-law is sitting, Very short. of course you would not even think of saying anything that is uh, outlaw. You will be focused on asking questions which would really help you to formulate uh, a decision. Jazakallah khair. Sheikh. You're, you're bringing back memories now. You've got to, you've got to stop it there. Okay, we we'll run out of time today. Jazakallah khair for all your questions today. Uh, please don't forget our email address. Ask at huda dot tv. Well, until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.